Are you scared to open your desktop for fear of disappearing in a pile of digital files? Or maybe you're someone who has over a thousand emails sitting unread in your inbox right now. My name is Pete Moriarty. I'm gonna give you some tips on how to clean up your digital life. In a world that's constantly connected and with everybody working online, we are in a reality where pretty much everything we do is on our computer now. Yet, many of us still struggle to keep our online world in good order. And it's not quite good enough to try and go into your email and try and get that inbox down to zero when we don't have six hours of a day to be spending in front of our computer, dragging and dropping emails into folders. Now, that said, if you do have enough time to do that, that's wonderful. But if you don't have all day to send in your email and you know maybe you're an entrepreneur managing staff, your customers are coming after you, you've got to make sure that you manage all of the challenges of your business as well as your family life and hopefully the social circle as well, it's pretty easy to quickly become overwhelmed. So I've built some tips for you on how to keep things clean and tidy from someone who's been in business in the tech world for over 20 years and I've helped literally thousands of business owners get their tech and systems in check so they can live a more productive life. Number one, I'm gonna get the boring stuff out of the way. Yes, I'm gonna start with files and folders. Now, it's important to have everything online and the easiest thing that you can do is have a cloud first policy. Now, what I mean by that is yes, you know, your Mac is probably gonna be backed up into iCloud automatically, but for all of your business files and ideally all of your personal files as well, you wanna be storing them on cloud-based storage. Now, our preference is obviously Google Drive for everything. And if you're a business owner using Google Drive inside Google Workspace, well, you can also use a piece of backup software like Backupify or others that are similar to backup everything inside your Google world. Now, many people still come to us and say, well, what about a local backup? And should I still plug in a hard drive? And you know, once a quarter, should I do a manual backup? My personal opinion is not to bother. Once you've got everything saved inside of Google, it's highly, highly unlikely that Google are gonna lose any of your data. But if you wanna have an extra layer of protection, an online cloud to cloud backup solution is much better than you remembering to plug a hard drive into your computer and try and run some kind of manual backup script or backup software from time to time. The issue that you have with local backup software on a computer is that it's not always reliable, it doesn't always run, and it requires you to remember it, which is not the easiest thing to do with all of the pressures and challenges of competing attention in our lives. Now, once you've got everything stored online, it's a great idea to make sure that you actually have a basic naming convention and some basic folder structure. Now, I've got two videos to help you do that if you're looking for extra homework. Number one is our genius business structure, which shows you how to properly structure your organizational structure inside your business and your teams as well, which is gonna help you set up great organizational structure for scale in the business. And number two, we've got a training video on how to implement group-based permissions inside your Google Workspace account, which will make sure all of your files and folders are shared with just the right people. But moving right along to your personal organization, let's talk about managing your email. Now, I've shared this many times on the channel, getting rid of marketing messages from your inbox is one of the smartest ways you can reduce over 50% of the email from your inbox today. Search for the word unsubscribe, create a filter, and move any emails right out of the inbox into a filtered folder. That's gonna make it clean up from day one. But more importantly, how can you use Gmail to its best ability to help you save more time? One of my favorite features of Google Workspace, if you're a business owner, is the ability to delegate your mailbox to somebody else inside your business. You'll give them access to your account to be able to view your emails and sort out your mailbox without having to know your password or without the ability to access your Google Drive or anything else inside your Google account. Delegated mailboxes allow someone else to triage your email, place those emails in the correct folder for you to review, and then when it's time for you to get through your email, they're already pre-sorted for you. Share this with one of your team members who can help you to save some time. Next up is one of my favorites and that's cutting down on social media. Now, we all wanna stay connected to friends and family and we all wanna stay connected to our customers as well, but social can be pretty darn overwhelming when it's installed on every single one of our devices. One of the things that I like to do is to choose different devices for different tasks. And so when I'm in a different mode, like perhaps work mode or social mode, or even just laying on the couch, goofing off mode, I'll have different social apps installed on different devices, depending on which context I'm in. So I'm not mindlessly distracted when I'm out and about on the road or when I'm trying to get some work done. My work machine has no social apps. If I want to access Facebook or Instagram for business purposes, I have to open it up in a browser. My mobile phone is the same. I can't access those apps even when I'm out and about. The only way I can connect to my friends who are close to me is via WhatsApp when I'm on the road. And my phone is pretty much just used for taking notes if I need to, catching up with my team in Google Chat if they need me urgently while I'm on the road, or using something like Google Maps to connect to navigation. That's basically made my phone a bit of a dumb phone, but still allows me to get the absolute basics done. And if my mum calls me, I can still answer. 
But apart from that, I don't really use my phone for much idle activity. If I do want to spend time on Reddit or Instagram or Facebook, I do that on a mini iPad. Typically when I'm sitting on the couch and sometimes it's when I'm watching TV. That's a great device for me to scroll and do what I like when I'm in the context of relaxing and having social time. I do get to connect with that at least once a day and so I don't really feel like I'm missing out on the social connections with my friends, but it has helped me to dramatically cut down on the time I spend scrolling on social media. While we're speaking about smartphones, there's something really smart that you can do to help reduce the amount of distractions that you have between different devices and that's going to help you get more done. My recommendation is to switch off notifications for all non-essential apps, especially email. So when you're on the go, the only thing you should be getting notifications for are messages from your work team or something urgent. Anything like a message from Twitter or a notification from Uber Eats is not something that you really need when you're out and about. So switch all of those notifications off. You'll find the setting in your notification settings of your mobile device. Now I've made the decision to add all of my closest friends to WhatsApp and switch off notifications to text messages and phone calls from people I don't know completely. It means that I'm never distracted by the latest bonus or the latest offer from a local store that I visited once and gave my phone number for a digital receipt. In the phone settings of an iPhone, you can even restrict phone calls from people who are not expressly in your address book, meaning that your phone will only ever ring if it's somebody that you know. Now my tip number five was gonna to be to schedule a regular time to do a bit of spring cleaning, but I've actually had a bit of change of heart on that. There's one thing that I do for spring cleaning and I wanna implore you to try this as well. This is one of the tricks of the tech world. Anytime I buy a new device, instead of restoring from backup, I actually set it up as a fresh device. And that's my self test to see whether or not I have all of my files uploaded to the cloud securely. Can I recover to a new device if I was to accidentally lose my device? And am I certain that I'm keeping my discipline of doing everything online, like I shared with you in the first tip? My recommendation with you, instead of trying to find time to do like a spring cleaning on your devices is you spring clean once a year when you buy a new device or every second year if you're a little slower. Grab that new device out of the packet, sign into all of your apps and see if you can still get your work and life done without having to back up and restore any of your data manually. Of course, you don't throw out the old device until you've tested out and made sure that all the data's come across. But what I tend to do is delete the apps on my old phone one by one after I've ensured that everything has been backed up and my new phone is operating correctly. One of my final tips, and this is a bonus one, is to schedule regular digital detoxes. The best thing that I've done is to make sure that my phone is never in my bedroom. I leave it charging in my office or somewhere else in the house so I don't have the energy of a device with me and it's not the first thing I touch when I wake up in the morning. Secondly, I make sure that some days I just spend away from my device altogether. Usually it's on a Sunday and I might go to the beach or I might do something else in my life where I don't take my phone. And that gives me the peace of mind that I don't have to worry about being dinged or contacted and it gives me a little bit of a reset each week. Now, it might be hard for you to achieve that when you need to do things like pay bills or you need to be contactable. Or consider maybe having a second phone that people can reach you on in an emergency if you've got loved ones that need to reach out to you. Or maybe try an Apple Watch, which lets you take emergency calls but not really do anything else productive on it. Keeping away from the scrolling on the social apps will surely help you to live a less cluttered life and give you a little bit more productive and social time back. If right now you're feeling overwhelmed by the pressures of your digital landscape, sometimes a little less stuff will give you a little more time. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius. Or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack or your Workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.